In section 7.2, we're going to talk about points, lines, and planes. On page 441, in the gray box in the middle of the page, it says, Geometry is a mathematical system built on accepted facts, basic terms, and definitions. In geometry, some words such as point, line, and plane are undefined. Undefined terms are the basic ideas that you can use to build the definitions of all other figures in geometry. Although you cannot define undefined terms, it is important to have a general description of their meanings. A point, line, and plane basically can form every single shape in geometry. So look at your key concepts. I'm going to briefly go over a few things, but then I want you to read them to yourself. First thing is a point. A point has no size. It just indicates a location. You have to use a dot and a capital letter with one letter. A line is a straight path that extends in opposite directions without ends. It contains infinitely many points, but it does not contain an endpoint. You must use two letters on the, to name a line, and you would read it as line AB or line BA, and it can be interchanged as well. So line AB and line BA are, would be the same thing looking at that example in, uh, in the key concepts area. In addition, when you name a line, you can call it line L, which has to be a single lowercase letter. A plane is represented by a flat surface that extends without end in all direction. It also has no thickness. A plane contains infinitely many points. You can name a plane by a capital letter such as plane P or by at least three points in the plane that do not lie on the same line, such as plane ABC. They can't form a line. So like plane ABC, do not form a line. Another vocab word on the top of page 442. Points that lie on the same line are collinear. So collinear points are points that lie on the same line. Points and lines that lie in the same plane are coplanar. All points of a line are coplanar because they're all on the same plane. So let's look at problem one. And they got it on problem one, naming points, lines, and planes. They got it A says, what are two other ways to name line RS? So if you look at line RS, you can name it, for example, line L, because it's a lowercase cursive letter. You can also name it using any of the other two points on the line. You only use two, point, or two different points, two letters on the line. So you can name it line RQ, and you have to have the line symbol. You could say line QR. You could say line SR. And you could keep going. Any combination of those three points on that line, you could use as the name. B, what are two more ways to name plane P? So to name plane P, you could also use any three points that don't make up a line. So you could call it plane RQV. That would be another way. Another way would be plane We could say RSV. C, what are the names of three other collinear points? So give me three other points that make a line. Collinear points would be point T, Q, and N. Those three points are collinear. D, what are two points that are not coplanar with points R, S, and V? So R, S, and V give me two points that are not on the same plane as R, S, and V. Well, that would be points T and N. They are not on the same plane. On page 443, we have three more vocab words. The terms point, line, and plane are not defined because their definitions would require terms that also need defining. You can, however, use undefined terms to define other terms. A geometric figure is a set of points. Space is the set of all points in three dimensions. Similarly, the definitions for segment and ray are based on points and lines. So a segment. A segment 
it has two endpoints and it contains all the points between them. You name a segment and array with two capital letters. And you could read the one in the diagram there as segment AB or segment BA. Array is part of a line that consists of one endpoint and it goes in the other direction without end. You can name a ray by first using its endpoint and then also another point on that ray. So if, in the example given, you can name that ray AB. You cannot name it ray BA because B is not the endpoint. A is the endpoint and you have to start with the endpoint. Opposite rays are two rays that share the same endpoint and form a line. So looking at page 443 at that diagram, you could say the opposite rays would be ray CB and ray CA are opposite because they share the same endpoint, which is point C. So on page 443, we're going to start with the got it. You have a diagram. Ray EF and ray FE form a line. Are they opposite rays? Explain. EF and FE. No, they are not opposite. Because in the first ray, you're starting with endpoint E, and in the second ray, you're starting with endpoint F. They are two different rays. They are not opposite of each other. Example number three says, use the figure to the right in exercises three and four. So what are all segments that you can name in the figure? To name a segment, we have to use two points. And so we could name, for example, segment RS, segment RT, notice I have to use the segment symbol, segment RW, segment ST, segment SW, segment TW. Now, I want you to understand that there are one, two, three, six segments here. You could have also named segment RS as SR. Now, they are not different segments. These are the same segment named different ways. So you can't say that like these are two separate segments. They're not. This is all one segment. So you could have also switched any of these letters around to name the seg same segment. Number four, what are all the rays? So you could say ray RS. Now, you could have also named that ray RT or ray RW because R is your endpoint and then you can name any of the other letters on that ray to be the same ray. So if you said ray RS and ray RT as different rays, they're not. They're the same ray. You could also say ray ST or you could say ray SW. You could say ray SW. I'm sorry, that's the same thing. So let's erase that here. You could say ray TW. You could also say ray WR. We're going to go in the other direction. You could say ray TR. You could say ray SR. On page 444, we're going to start talking about postulates. A postulate or axiom is an accepted statement of fact. Postulates, like undefined terms, are basic building blocks of the lo logical system in geometry. You will use logical reasoning to prove general concepts in this book. You have used some of the following geometric postulates in algebra. For example, you use postulate 1 when you graphed equations such as y equals 2x plus 8. You graphed two points and drew the line through the points. So postulate 1 says through any two points, there is exactly one line. So you can always make a line with two points. You can read the gray box in the middle yourself, talking about the intersection of those points. Postulate two, if two distinct lines intersect, then they intersect at exactly one point. Basically, it says you have two lines, they intersect, they intersect at a point. Postulate three is similar, stating that if two distinct planes intersect, then they intersect at exactly one line, as you can see in the drawing. On the top of page 445, when you know two points that two planes have in common, postulates one and three tell you that the line through those points is the intersection. So now if we look at the got it on the top of page 445, 
we have to find the intersection of two planes. So I want you to first think about the intersection of two lines. The intersections of two lines are a point. The intersection of two planes is a line. So in the got it A, it says, what are the names of two planes that intersect line BF? So line BF is this. So there's our line. Now the two planes that are going to intersect are going to be this side here and this side here. So we're going to have the basically the right side of this green line and the left side. So to name the plane, to name the plane, we have to give it two different planes. To name a plane, we have to name any three points that are on that plane. So for example, we have a point, I'm going to kind of make it, let's, let's change it to blue. If we're talking about this side over here, all four of these points are on that plane. All you have to do are name two or three of them. So we could say plane B C G. You could also have said B E F G. The other plane could be B F E or you could have said B F A or B E A. So right here, this side, you could have picked any four of these points to name this plane and any four of these points, A, B, F, or E, any, I'm sorry, any three of those four points to name the other plane. Remember, you use three letters. So these would be two sample answers and that would be part A. Part B says, why do you only need to find two common points to name the intersection of two distinct planes. Why do you only need to find two common points to name the intersection of two distinct planes? Because the intersection of two distinct planes is a line. And how many points make a line? It's two. So because two points name a line. On page 446, we're going to talk about our last postulate. I want you to look at um, the tripod sample in the gray region at the top, and then let's look at postulate four. So pause the video, read the tripod problem, and then let's go to postulate four. Postulate four says, through any three non-collinear points, that means if you have three non-collinear points, points that are not on the same line, you have made a plane. You've made a plane. So through any three nonclinear points, there is exactly one plane. For example, points Q, R, and S are nonclinear. Therefore, plane P is the only plane that contains them. So let's look at the got it problem. The got it problem says, what plane contains points L, M, and N? And shade that region. So L, M, and N. We want to shade this box to make a plane that contains L, M, and N. So I'm going to highlight it red. Here's L, here's M, here's N. So that means you're going to have to have a box. And point P is going to have to be involved in that because you're going to have to have like this plane that's going to cut through diagonally this box. So this is what I'm shading. Your plane is going to cut right through there. So it's basically cutting through the center of your rectangular prism here. It's this shaded region that's cutting through that. That is your plane that contains L, M, and N. It starts in the back top and cuts through the center and goes down to the bottom front. So M, L, P, and N are all on the same plane. And that's part A. Part B. What is the name of the line that is coplanar to line J, K, and line K, L? So if we want to name a line that is coplanar to J, K, and J, or K, L, so J, K is this line here. 
and line KL would be this line here. Notice that they are all coplanar with the top of this box. So you have to give me another line that is on the same plane as the top of this box. So you could say, I'm going to use green. You could say line JM, that's one answer. Line JM, or you could say line ML. Either one of those answers would be a correct answer for part B. Last problem is number seven. Shade the plane that contains the given points R, V, and W. So we want R, V, and W. Well, R, V, and W all would be on the same plane as the right side of this box. So there would be your plane that you would shade. Let's say I wanted to do points, this is just an extra part, U, X, and R. U, X, and R would be here. That means the plane would cut through this and it'd look like that. So your plane would cut through the blue region there and that would be an example of another example of U, X, and R would be on the same plane. So your plane may be a side of your rectangular prism or it may be cutting through the center of it. So please make sure tonight that you guys will definitely need to look at your vocab words. Uh, keep them organized, make flashcards if you need to.